Hi, in the previous video we looked at how a non-inverting amplifier works. Um, so uh, the, the output of the non-inverting amplifier is given by this equation. Um, and let's say, let's take for example that you want a gain of 2 here, which means uh, if you want a gain of 2, you can have R1 equal to R2, right? If you have R1 equal to R2, you get V out equal to twice of V in. Now the question that I want to ask here is how do you choose the values of R1 and R2? Can they be any values that you want or is there some restrictions? And the answer of course is there are some restrictions, okay? Uh, you can't use any values that you want. For some values, uh, most real op-amps would not work. Now if we had assumed that this op-amp was ideal and if in real life we had an ideal op-amp then you could have used any values of R1 and R2 and it might have worked but in real life it doesn't. So as a rule of thumb what uh, what I usually suggest is that both R1 and R2 should be less than 100 ohms and they both R1 and R2 should be uh, sorry, uh, it should be greater than 100 ohms. 100 ohms is too less a value to be lesser than. Yeah, so R1 and R2 value should be greater than 100 ohms and they should be less than 1 mega ohm. So you want your values of R1 and R2 to be between 100 ohms and 1 mega ohm. Now, why do I say that? Now, one of the reasons why I want, uh, I, I would want this is because just think about it. If R1 is very small, let's say R1 and R2 both are 100 ohms, okay? And you're getting a 5 volts uh, signal at the output. So what current is going to flow through here? Right, we have already looked that there's going to be no current flowing through the non-inverting terminal. So you have, let's say, a 5 volt signal here. This is 100 ohms and this is also 100 ohms which means you have a 200 ohms resistance. So the current that will flow here is going to be what? It's going to be five divided by 200 ohms, okay? Which is going to be uh, 2.5 milliampers, okay? And most op amps that you would use would work with 2.5 milliampers and there should be no problem. But let's say you uh, these resistors were 10 ohms, then you have 25 milliampers, and you're kind of reaching the limit of the output that this op-amp can supply, okay? So the output of the op-amp uh, cannot supply infinite amount of current. There is a limit to the current that it can supply, and that's what limits the voltages R1 and R2, okay? So, so that's the reason why we want to be above 100 ohms. And now I'm not saying this is a hard and fast rule, but uh, it's, it's, it's just a kind of a generic rule. Similarly, you don't want to go beyond one mega ohms uh, for, for uh, R1 and R2, because as you go larger and larger, the influences of stray capacitances and noise in your circuit start to increase. Okay, so the rules that I have mentioned here, as I say again and again, uh, these are not hard and fast rules. And as you gain more and more experience uh, in op-amp design, I'm sure you would want to break these rules quite a bit of time. But as a starting point, let's keep these rules in mind.